If the eyes are a window to the soul, how do you heal a young soul that is seeing too much? How do you shield eyes that have witnessed the ravages of alcohol and drug addiction? Domestic violence. Sexual abuse. And neglect. At Family Services of Metro Orlando, our goal is to help kids be kids, help parents be parents, and build families through community. I was just really depressed, and I swallowed a bottle of pills. <laughs> I swallowed a bottle of pills, and I didn't want to live anymore. My son wasn't home at the time. I would never put him in danger like that. Uh, he was staying at a friend's house. I was released from the hospital um, three or four days afterwards, and they told me that I could not pick up my son. And I was absolutely devastated. I couldn't believe it. When I first met Carrie through my role of Family Services in Metro Orlando, um, Carrie was having some challenges. Her son was in foster care, and even though she did everything on her case plan to get her son back, she was still kind of stuck. In her family team meeting, there was probably about eight, nine, ten people, including the family case manager who was convinced at that time that yes, she is a good and devoted mother and there is no risk here at all. Out of all the people that were involved in the case, she's the one person that stepped in and made things right. We adopted our boys 10 years ago. We made a promise to both boys on the very first night. We said, you never have to worry. You will never go any other place. You're ours forever. When we all learned sign language, we, well, the family, we were like, we could actually communicate to um, each other. And he, he knew, he actually, for once, he knew what was happening around him, communicate with him, and tell him what things were going on. And Family Services of Metro Orlando helped us that when I was doing my research for the cochlear implant, they encouraged me and said, go for it. If this will allow this boy to hear, let's try it, because the worst thing that can happen is they would say he would be the same. It's good for someone to believe. And Joey, and for her, him to be able to hear. So it feels good to know he has joy with him and that he can hear and that people believe in him. I had been abandoned, so it was a little frustrating for me. I believe I was just turning seven and my mom, she went up to the uh, DCF office and she told me to get out of the car and said don't go inside till I couldn't see it anymore. It's a very sudden uprooting you know they can come home from school and all of a sudden there there's a, a, a black trash bag packed up with their stuff and they're going out the door. In the beginning it was very very hard for me to connect to anyone you know I would at night I would cry every night for at least the first year when foster children come to your home, trust is a major issue. Um, for one, one of the reasons is that they don't trust, especially adults at that time. Everybody that tried to help me, I would lash out at. You know, it was really, really hard for me, but now I'm doing very well. I'm good grades in school. I'm currently going through an adoption. There's always room for hope in a child's heart, and that child always needs that room to be filled. So I think it's very important that these agencies are out there and that they continue to remain stable for the children.
I never had a father. You know, I had a stepfather, but he he was kind of abusive. And my mother, um, she 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 gave me good. I don't, I don't want to say that she wasn't a you know good mom because she did take care of me and she did give me some good instructions. But at the same time, though, she had kind of a drug problem. I see like you know the TV family, you know, the mother loves the son and the father loves the mother and all this good stuff. They work and they come home and the student goes to school and I try to understand why isn't my life as good as this is, you know, why isn't my life as good as my friends is, why isn't my family as good as their family is. And you never think it could happen to you. You would never ever believe it could happen to you. And it does. And I always told my parents, you know, a lot of times they get in arguments and they say, oh, Josh, you're never going to be anything. I say, well, I might not be anything, but as long as I have a child, I'll be able to be a better parent than you were to me. I was like five years old when I first became foster care. I really don't know why, but I was in foster care. And then eventually I got adopted. That didn't work out, and I went back to foster care. It's kind of hard to depend on somebody else because you don't, you don't know if they really, you know, care about you like like that. They like you care, think you want to care about them. So you give all, you're all into it, and they just disappoint. You. Years ago, there was no real support for these kids, and um, as they aged out of foster care, there was nothing there to really, to really help them. Um, the community-based care that's available today not only helps the foster parents and adoptive parents, but it's also there to help the, uh, the, the kids as they age out of foster care. I think that most people in John's situation use their past as an excuse, as an excuse not to take the next step. I think John kind of embraced his past and used that to motivate him and to be successful and realize that he wanted more for himself and he wanted a future for himself. And that drive and dedication, I think, far separated him from a lot of other individuals. Well, I've been in West Coast almost three years. When I started, I started as a bellman. Seven months, I was a trainer. Eleven months, I became a supervisor. And then later on, I became bell captain, a senior bell captain. Without family or service, or Mitchell Orlando being there for me, I think I would be in the streets, you know, selling drugs, being in jail, or probably dead. If I was to give one message about children in foster care, it would be that it could be any child. You know, there's not a particular group of children who are more likely. The truth of the matter is, they're generally not in foster care because it's their fault. They're in foster care for a variety of reasons, but really none of them have to do with the child. The children that you take care of I'll cry, are so precious. I mean, um, I just can't tell you how much it has meant to me. Just fostering and then becoming an adoptive mom. Um, it's just... Uh, Really, it's more rewarding to you. I mean, I don't even know how to explain that, but it, it's, it's much more rewarding to you than it is to even to, you know, to the kids, I think. So if you did your best at making them feel safe and happy and supported and did something to help build them up while you had them, then I think you did your job. Family Services of Metro Orlando is really dedicated to community-based care. They're really focused on involving the community in dealing with uh, foster and adoptive, mentoring. Most agencies are really much more focused on the individual care of the child, but um, Family Services is really dedicated to involving the community and having the community become stewards for really supporting the efforts of Family Services. Just seeing the foster youth, you know, they're very resilient and just to see them keep struggling and st keep um, striving for their goals is what I, you know, is the, the assurance that they're going to reach their goals and just the, the warm fuzzy that you get that, you know, you know that you played a part in, in the child's life. Since 2004, Family Services of Metro Orlando has partnered with local agencies to provide safe, loving homes for children throughout Central Florida. But we cannot do it alone. Now more than ever, we are building community partnerships to improve their quality of life. The key is to think creatively. And if everybody only does the one little thing that they think of that they can do, with all the people in the Orlando area, can you imagine what we could really do for these families if everybody 
chipped in just a little bit. Together, we can strengthen families. Together, we can build families. Together, we can make hope happen. Together, we can build a better future. Together, we can power possibilities. Together, we can give every child a childhood.